for end times update in a while and there has been a lot going on y'all know there's a Cuban Missile Crisis going on right now y'all remember back in the some of us probably don't remember but back in the 60s it was a pretty big deal when they put nuclear missiles and they were trying to bring them into Cuba and it was just about this close to being the world war this week they sailed a nuclear submarine and they made sure they surfaced you know those nuclear submarines you don't have to bring them to the surface they're probably over there all the time underneath the water and they don't tell anybody but they made it a point to come right up on top of the water and fly their flag for everybody to see and go hey we're here and they put a nuclear submarine right off of Florida and just set it there so we're looking at the signs of the end times here we has been a while since we've had a study so I figured we'd do a little update maybe get my first slide going here and we should start There we go. He said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. That is in Luke 21, 10 through 11. Of course, if you're going to study the uh, end times, Matthew 24, Luke 21, they're kind of sister chapters describing the uh, same conversation Jesus was having, and it's just a beautiful study. This was in Barron's Magazine. This is one of those kind of, uh, Barron's Magazine is like these, what these smart financial people read, Barron's, right? People that are far looking ahead to things that are coming, right? Armed conflicts in 2023 highest since the end of World War II, right? What did we just read? Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. We're looking for signs of the end times, okay? Armed conflicts, the highest since the end of World II. More armed conflicts took place worldwide in 2023 than any other time since the end of the Second World War. All over the world, there's conflict going on. There's wars that are going on right now in the world. It goes on to talk about violence in the world is at an all-time high since the end of the Cold War. And he's doing research. The figures suggest that the conflict landscape has become increasingly conflict with more conflicts occurring within the same country. Uh, and he's going to go on this. I didn't put the whole article, but basically he's going to tell you here. I wanted to zoom in on this part. The number of conflicts can be attributed to the notice. Islamic State. Notice how we're going to come back to Revelation 6. Like I said, if you want to study the end times, Matthew 24 is key, Luke 21, Jesus is describing the events, but then you're going to find yourself back in Zechariah where it's going to tell you that there's going to be four spirits that are going to be in the earth in the last days. Revelations six describes the four spirits to you and actually you like this color codes them for you gives you four colors these are the four colors that you can look for to recognize these four spirits it identifies them by color we call them the four horsemen right so revelation six of us said these are four spirits that are going to be in the earth in the last days and when we see all of these things go on in the earth, we realize we are not fighting people. We're not fighting people, folks. And I'm going to show you some things today in my study. I tell you, when I saw it, it just, the old man, he's been chasing me. <laughs> You're going to see this guy on the subway. And when I saw this guy on the subway, I wanted to yell, you Nazi. And I wanted to just grab him. That's the old man. And I realize this man's being controlled by a spirit. He doesn't even know what manner of spirit he's of. But it is a spirit that's gotten a hold of him. It's the green spirit. The Islamic green spirit 
It's Ishmael and Isaac. The Arabs will always hate the Jews. They, there's just this spirit. Now, I'm not saying that everyone is like that, but it is, it is a spirit, right? And it is prevalent in the earth in the last days. The angel talked with me, what are these, my Lord? The angel answered and said unto me, these are four spirits of the heaven. And he saw the, the four spirits. And so we're going to see the four spirits when we look into Revelation 6, is the four horsemen. He said, and when I saw the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, come and see, and I saw the white horse. Right? And so you're going to see the, the four horsemen come out. So let's skip ahead. To verse 8, and I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And so you see it is called the pale horse. However, repetition is the key to learning, so you understand the pale, the word there for pale when you look at it it's 5515 in your strongs you can look it up it's actually used four times in your bible 5515 that word it is a word that that you know because you've heard it before it's actually chloros and it's look at look what it says there green okay so three times out of the four it's actually translated green okay so he's telling us that it is a green horse. Okay, so that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the green horse. One time it's translated pale in that particular verse. The other three verses where it's translated, I put it up there for you. It says, he commanded them to sit down by companies in the green grass. And the green grass was burnt up. That's in Revelations 8 and 7. And it says in Revelations 9 and 4, he didn't want them to, to burn up any of the green things. So you can see it's translated green the other three times. And we still use the same word today, chlorophyll, talking about the green in plants. It, we recognize it generally as green. So if you think of what is in the earth today that is green, one-fourth of the population of the world, they kill with the sword, they glorify death, they will wrap themselves in a suicide vest, walk right into the middle of a bunch of people and think they're a hero when they blow everyone up. Can y'all think of a group that does that? Radical Islamic terrorists. And my favorite video clip is when they have Eric Holder on the hot seat. He's the Attorney General for President Obama. Will you at least acknowledge that radical Islamic terrorism could have been possibly one of the motivating factors that caused this man to do it when he was yelling Allah Akbar as he was spraying the people with a machine gun? Uh, radical Islamic terrorism? What? Huh? What? He would not say the words. For some reason, they will not say it. You cannot get them to say it. To this day, they will. Even if it's... Very obviously, everyone looks right at it and can see it. They'll go like this. You know, we had the other night, and I'm going to show you here in just a minute. They had a guy that they pulled over, the NYPD. And thank goodness they haven't totally defunded the police yet. They're trying. Okay? The police can still make traffic stops, but they're trying. They saw a car, and they stopped it. And this guy had a, a vest that said NYPD on it. He had a a outer vest like a reflective vest that said New York Transit Authority. Like he was heading somewhere, he was going to put on that outer vest, New York Transit Authority. He had that. He had a mask. He had a Glock. He had nine magazines. He had a sword. He had a hatchet. And on the sword it said in Arabic, God forgive me, written in Arabic. And he was on his way to do... I would think he was probably on his way to do something. They pulled up his internet and he had all kinds of jihadist... Allah is great, da -da. but we're not sure. We're still studying it, and we're not quite sure why he would want to do all these things and have these weapons in the car with him. See, so green. Whenever you see them all marching down the street, what do they have? The green headbands. 
Whenever they're going to celebrate Ramadan, they take the green lights and shine it on the Empire State Building to celebrate Ramadan. What color? God's telling us. Amen. He's telling you the color to look for. He's even telling you in Revelation 6, there's going to be four spirits in the earth. One of them will be green. They'll have one-fourth of the population of the world. They glorify death. They kill with the sword. Okay, so we're looking at this. Our southern border. We had a, a major terrorist threat. And folks, I, I, as sure as I am standing right here, it is only a matter of time. We dodged another bullet this week. They had a group of people that came in, eight suspected people. They let them through. They actually came through. These ones actually came through and got vetted. Of course, you know what their idea of vetting is. Here up. Reappear in eight years for your court hearing. Go anywhere you want. You're gone. We're not going to do any background checks. We don't know who you are or where you came from. Bye. That's their idea of vetting. Okay, so they, they actually did come through the port of entry, and they were released. Okay? And I'm not giving away any secrets, but there are people who sit in rooms, and when you talk on the cell phone, you should know that there's people who listen on your cell phone, whether you like it or not. There's somebody sitting in a room somewhere listening. Okay? They heard the word bomb, bomb, and these people are talking back and forth in Los Angeles, Pennsylvania, and New York City. They link it every now and then the FBI gets it right. They miss a lot of them, but they got it right on this one. These guys all are from the same country. They all came to the southern border, and they're talking to each other, and they're discussing bombing. They're all a part of ISIS-K. Now, if you're not familiar with ISIS-K, they're from Afghanistan. Remember Afghanistan? The biggest disgrace in American history, right? We left behind. When you look at this, this country they're from is called Tajikistan. And look what's right underneath it, borders it. They're bordered right up against Afghanistan. All eight of these people just happen to be from Tajikistan. And they all came through. Why, why would you come to America to discuss bombs with your buddies, right? We know what they were here for. Remember, we left the Taliban all of these weapons to choose from. And they're right next to Tajikistan. They say this Tajikistan is the next where the Taliban and all of them had their big hangout and they were uh, holding up Osama bin Laden. Tajikistan is the next big terrorist training base where all of these ISIS-K people are hanging out. There's no government. They're all, they hate, they hate America. They hate America. But they want to come to America. And they want to come to America just to be nice to us and hang out because they think it's fun. No, they're going to do a bomb is what they're going to do. So they come over here. And there's one of our... 22,000. I can't, still can't get over that. We left them 22,174 Humvees. Unbelievable. And so they drive around and terrorize the poor people in their country in the armor that we gave them. And the women have to walk around with a bag on their head like this with a little eye hole. today, leaving for the Let's G7 summit in Italy in about two hours from now. But here at home, a group of ISIS-linked terror suspects were just arrested in three of America's biggest cities after walking right into our country across our southern border. Lucas Tomlinson is live with the breaking details. Lucas, what do we know? Well, good morning, Carly and Todd. Not only did those eight terror suspects enter the United States illegally through the southern border, they apparently received, quote, full vetting, according to our own Bill Malusian. The suspects are from Tajikistan, the landlocked country in Central Asia. It borders Afghanistan to the south and China to the east. Recall the main suspects in the terrorist attack on the concert hall in Moscow that killed 145 people back in March were also from Tajikistan. The FBI and DHS said in a statement to Fox, quote, 
The individuals arrested are detained in ICE custody pending removal proceedings. As the FBI and DHS have recently described in public and partner bulletins, the U.S. has been in a heightened threat environment. The FBI and DHS will continue working around the clock with our partners to identify, investigate, and disrupt potential threats to national security. The suspected terrorists were arrested in Los Angeles and across the country in New York and Philadelphia in recent days. According to the New York Post, who broke the story, quote, Part of the investigation featured a wiretap which revealed one of the now arrested individuals was talking about bombs. Remember the Boston Marathon bombing? I'm afraid something like that might happen again or worse. Now, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned lawmakers back in April about what he described as the increased threat of a, quote, coordinated attack inside the U.S. after the Moscow massacre. And, of course, again, remember the suspects in that attack were also from Tajikistan, guys. All right, Lucas Tomlinson, live for us. Lucas, thank you. Let's bring in former Trump national security aide Johnny Elliott to talk about this very concerning story. And John, one of the most concerning things about this is that these eight people who were uh, just arrested, they weren't gotaways. They received full vetting by CBP. Nothing was flagged, so they were welcomed into our country. Given the millions of other people who were treated the very same way, where does that leave us? Well, you're absolutely right, Carly. It's a disaster here. One of them, one of these eight actually used the app. They have an app with your phone where you can actually go in and get pre-vetted. And so we're now having terrorists use the app to get into our country. And so, look, this is something where it's absolutely, this is an open border and the terrorists know it. And so whether it's the ISIS-K guys who, uh, terrorists who went after just a couple months ago in Moscow and killed over 100 people who are, who are there in, in Moscow. This is a, a similar thing could happen right now. And then just look at the White House right now. There was over, over the weekend, Carly, what there was in front of the White House is you had people putting all sorts of just defacing one of the statues, throwing bricks at, at uh, uh, the park police that were there. And so look, this is something that not a single person got arrested there. So we, we've got people who can come that close to the White House and now we have known terrorists. Just since, since Biden's been in office, Carly, what you've had is you've had 320 known terrorists have come in there and been stopped at the border. And that's just the ones that, that we've stopped. Look, if, if you're using the app and you're coming in and you're a terrorist, then guess how many that we have that are just going right around the ICE protection that we have now, the Customs Border Protection. It's an absolute disgrace. Yeah, I fear it's just a matter of time before our intel services, which do an amazing job, by the way, not discrediting them, yeah. but they fail to catch one of these terror cells before it's too late. And that was a sentiment that the FBI director expressed some fear about when he uh, testified a few weeks ago. Listen. We've seen the threat from foreign terrorists rise to a whole nother level. On top of that, increasingly concerning is the potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland. Not unlike the ISIS-K attack, we... So he's telling you the same people that, y'all remember when they attacked that big concert hall in Russia? That was just a, a little short while back. It was the same people, the ISIS people. So now they're in here. This is uh, NYPD, and they basically did a uh, traffic stop. They saw a vehicle driving, and something was wrong with the license plate. That's all it was, just a license plate. And so they stopped it, they got up, and they approached this guy, and they knew right away something was wrong. And so they began to look further into the car, and you can see he has a uh, hatchet, handcuffs, police equipment, uh, a lot of ammunition. And this, uh, this police chief's going to describe to you here what they found. Members of this department make gun arrests, weapons arrests, arrests for knives every day. But uh, arrests of this magnitude, the amount of ammunition, NYPD uh, paraphernalia in the car was significant. Well, armed to the teeth, that's the quote from the NYPD. Pulling over an SUV in New York, Queens, New York, what they found inside was nothing short of disturbing. There was a lot inside there, too. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. I'm Bill Hemmer. Welcome to our program. Hello to you. Good morning. On this summer day. Good morning. I'm Dana Perino, and this is America's Newsroom. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a there's questions about just mm -hmm. regular policing mm -hmm. and whether that's fair. Yeah. But this is one of the reasons that they do it because the early morning traffic stop may have derailed a terror attack. Police pulled over the suspect because his license plate was blacked out. And they took a look inside, and what they found was alarming. Yeah, sure is. NYPD body armor, a loaded 9mm, nine loaded magazines, two axes, multiple knives, a whip, a stun gun, 
and a baton. Reportedly etched into that baton was the Arabic word for God forgive me. The suspect identified as a 27-year-old from Queens. The New York Post reporting he shared jihadist views online. So this happening after ICE arrested eight migrants this week with ties to ISIS. All eight crossed the border illegally and the FBI raising concerns the war in the Middle East could inspire attacks here at home. So you can see the green spirit. It's very obvious. That sign right there, I know it's hard to read, but it says, Long live October 7th. Now, folks, I believe in freedom of speech. We all believe in freedom of speech. But when you're going to walk down the street, imagine you're a Jew living in New York, and you see a parade coming by, and they're protesting, voicing their opinions, and they're walking past you with a mask on, holding up a sign saying, Long live October 7th, the worst terrorist attack in, against Israel. Can you imagine somebody, pretty soon they're going to be holding up a sign saying, long live 9-11. Right? If they can do one for October 7th, why can't they do one for 9-11? Celebrating what they did on 9-11. There's a Antifada, which means shake off. They're trying to shake off the, what they call the occupation. And they consider any means necessary, if it means walking into a cafe with a bunch of Jews sitting in there and blowing yourself up and killing kids and women and or getting onto a bus and blowing. That was going on for a long time. They were blowing up buses, you know. And so that, that they consider that armed resistance against Israel, killing Jews, is part of Intifada. Anytime you see that word Intifada, that's what that means. Second Timothy 3, this is talking about the last days, which is what we're talking about. Paul tells us that perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. I'm going to focus in on those last two parts right there. And this is from Rick Renner's Sparkling Gems from the Creek. I was reading my devotional the other morning, and I came across this, and it just jumped out at me. But he said, the material I'm about to present concerns a subject, concerns a subject that I normally wouldn't write about. However, it provides a powerful illustration of the depravity Paul prophesied would occur during the last days, and I believe it deserve, serves as a wake-up call to the church. Sometimes we need a stark reminder of the rapid degeneration of society's moral fabric that is occurring all around us at an ever-increasing rate so we don't grow complacent and just go with the flow. You agree with that? There's just so much going on, it's just easy. The Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. You get so used to seeing it, you just go, oh, right? That's, we should say, that's not normal. Right? That shouldn't, be, that shouldn't be normal. But society is in a downward spiral. As the church, we have a vital role to play in these perilous times as the standard bearers of truth. So bear with me as I take on that role to share some disturbing but important information. You will understand my point. The word fierce is a strange word to describe today. This word would better be used to describe cannibals or barbarians. It's anemeros, which is, de which is derived from the word nameros, which means gentle, kind, mild. However, when you put an A on the front, it always means the, exactly the opposite. So instead of being gentle, kind, mild, you become savage, vicious, uncivilized, violent, ferocious. That's what it's saying the people in the last days will be like. They're just the, act, the opposite of gentle and mild. So he said people are going to be fierce, Despisers of those that are good. Aphila gathos. It's a very strange Greek word that depicts a society. See if this sounds familiar. Where law is not primarily intended to protect the rights of good people, but rather is used instead to protect and defend the rights of offenders. Does that sound familiar at all? The word is unusual. In fact, it is never used anywhere else in the New Testament. Who could ever imagine a world where laws were used primarily to defend offenders and not to protect the rights of those who are good? 
Yet, this is precisely what Paul prophesied in this verse. He said in the last days, people would be fierce, and then they would despise, or they would take the laws and twist them so that the laws were used against good people to protect the wicked. There's another one of those protests going on in New York City, and I want you to pay attention to that yellow flag right there. That flag is Hezbollah. Look at that sign right there. I know it's hard to read, but if you look at it real close, it says, kill hostages now. They're like protesting against the Jews. One of them's holding up a sign saying, just kill the hostages now. This is the president or the uh, director, I'm sorry, director of the museum, the Brooklyn Museum. She's a Jew. So she wakes up in the morning and this is on the front of her house. She is called a white supremacist Zionist. And they have put red blood, simulated blood. I mean, I hope it's not human blood, but they put blood all over her, the front of her house. Blood on your hands. And there's a picture of her up there in the corner. This is in New York. Brooklyn Museum director, board members, homes were vandalized with anti-Semitic graffiti. Blood on your hands. Folks, this is the United States of America. This is not Berlin. This is America. This is going on. The Brooklyn Museum director and a number of the Jewish board members were targeted overnight by anti-Semitic vandals who tossed red paints and scrawled blood on your hands across their homes. Shocking images show. Now, I want you to focus in on one part. There's an inverted red triangle. It's upside down. It's a red triangle. It's upside down. This is used by Hamas to target Israelis. Israel, their military wing of Hamas will mark Israeli targets for death by putting that red triangle upside down on their house, their cars, their homes, to let them know we're coming for you. So look at her house when she comes out front and sees it. Look, look on the door there. There's a lot of this that people would just look at and miss. When she walked outside, the first thing she saw that her eyes went to, I guarantee you, that. They're threatening to kill me. That right there is a death threat. That's straight from Hamas, from their military arm, the upside down triangle. So I said, oh yeah, that's interesting. I read that in the article. So I said, you know what, I'll Google it. I typed in, what is the inverted triangle in Hamas? The inverted red triangle has been used in video by the Al-Qassam brigades. What's the Al-Qassam in Hamas is their military arm. Hamas's military wing to identify Israeli military targets, such as tanks. So that are, but, but it basically it's just letting them know that, that we're targeting you. Back in the U.S. tonight here in New York City, authorities are describing uh, that chilling anti-Semitic scene on the subway. Protesters asking, quote, Zionists to raise their hands and get off the train. Authorities say others defacing the home of a museum director who is Jewish. And tonight, the New York City mayor's warning about this hate. Here's Aaron Kuchersky. Tonight, this video shows a frightening moment on a New York City subway car when protesters demanded riders raise their hands if they're Zionists. The train held at Union Square for a police inspection. Officers in riot gear seen on the crowded platform. Protesters clashing with police. They had just come from a rally where the flags of terror groups Hamas and Hezbollah were waved. Another saying, long live October 7th. Protesters breaking through barriers, setting off smoke bombs and flares outside an exhibit remembering the victims of the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel. The Monday incident, part of an escalating series of provocations that go beyond protest and into what Mayor Eric Adams has called overt, unacceptable anti-Semitism. I thought it was despicable. 
It was disgusting what we saw. And you cannot call for peace while you're celebrating what happened on October 7th. And this morning, vandals threw red paint and posted a threatening sign at the home of the director of the Brooklyn Museum, who was Jewish. On the door, they painted an inverted red triangle, a symbol used by Hamas. David, this vandalist and police say may be the work of the same people who splashed red paint on the ground outside a Palestinian office here in Manhattan and scattered leaflets that called for more violence against Israel. David, Aaron Katursky here in New York. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Mostly peaceful weekend in Washington. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and little Johnny Jihadis surrounded the White House. Today in Union Square, NYC, a man was caught on video making vile anti-Semitic threats saying, I wish Hitler was still here. He would have wiped all you out. This follows protesters showing a sign celebrating the October 7th terrorist attack and people waving flags of prescribed terrorist organizations, Hezbollah and Hamas. Shockingly, there have been no arrests or investigations into these individuals. What do you think? Is that America? So it just it makes you realize that. We are in the last of the last days. People are fierce. Fierce, that's what it says. In the last days, Paul warns us that people will be fierce. They will despise those that are good. This is on UCLA. When they went in to, uh, this right here is not, but this is Nazis preventing students from entering the schools. This was in UCLA. When they went in, they finally broke up their camp and allowed, they were not letting Jewish students come onto the campus to go to class. But they finally had, they had Zionist checkpoints. Are you a Zionist? We weren't, aren't going to let you on the school. And so they had, this is what the public saw, like little tents set up. It looked peaceful and happy. We're just a, a camp. Death to Zionism. When you get back and you fold the layers away and you look. And this is what one student wrote, this uh, Jewish student wrote. He said he was about 100 feet away and he heard somebody screaming from within the camp, Zionist, Zionist. And so they came up and they basically blocked him from approaching into the camp. Every step I took, they, they took a step forwards and they forced him. He said, I was forced to walk away and leave the campus. Where was the school president? Where's the president of the United States? When they moved all of the stuff away, this, the police cleared it out. Finally, they allowed the police to come in and cleared it out. And you could see the uh, intifada. That's the 
Hamas on the left. That's what one of the students was wearing when he's eating his lunch there on the right. The green spirit. This is, remember I keep telling you, the yellow is the Hamas, uh, or I'm sorry, the Hezbollah flag. That is actual Hezbollah. There's their flag. I got like a little three-minute video I'm going to show you here. This time always flies by so fast when I'm showing you this. But we're identifying the green spirit. So you understand Hezbollah. Hezbollah basically is Palestinians. Palestinians, Lebanon, let them come into their country. Y'all, Probably some of y'all remember this. I'm just telling you something you already know. Lebanon used to be a beautiful country. They were like the Paris of the Middle East. Everybody would go to Lebanon on vacation. It was a beautiful country. Well, we'll be open to the Palestinians and let them come in here. Yasser Arafat, y'all remember Yasser Arafat? PLO, Palestine Liberation Organization. He comes into Lebanon. He uses that as his base to launch attacks into Israel. So Israel finally says, enough. They attack into Lebanon in 1982. I remember that's when I joined the military. Does that make me look old? <laughs> when all that was going on. So he attacks into, Israel attacks into Lebanon to attack the PLO, which is the Palestine Liberation Organization. They back them all the way up into Beirut, and there's got them surrounded. And so then the UN comes in and says, hey... We need to be nice to the Palestinians. And so we'll have a multinational force. And we'll just basically uh, put all these different peacekeepers from other countries in there. And of course, part of them was American Marines. Hezbollah, Palestinians, Hezbollah drove a truck bomb into our barracks and killed over 200 Marines. There's their flag right there. What did you see the little kid waving at the rally? Celebrating? a Hezbollah flag. The old man wants to rise up and go, okay, but it's a spirit. There you see, there's the Hezbollah flag. He's got the Hezbollah flag and the Hamas flag. I don't even think they have a clue what they're talking about. Somebody's probably paying them. George Soros is paying them, okay? Here's a little thing on Hezbollah, it's short. wields significant influence in Lebanon and throughout the Middle East. And security experts say the group's fighting power has noticeably grown stronger in recent years. So, who are Hezbollah? The group was formed during Lebanon's civil war in the early 1980s. Hezbollah, meaning party of God in Arabic, emerged from the country's huge and impoverished Shiite Muslim population. Lebanon was a civil war, there was no government to speak of, and Hezbollah as a nascent organization could do pretty much as it pleased. Initially, Hezbollah was meant to repel Israel's occupation of southern Lebanon. At the time, Israeli forces were occupying it, in part to expel Palestinian fighters who used the country as a base to attack Israel. <laughs> As they paraded through the streets of Tehran, the liberated weapons held high, there was an air of celebration. Hezbollah's Lebanese founders were inspired by Iran's recent revolution, and Iran soon supported Hezbollah with money, training, and weapons. But Hezbollah also opposed Western influence in the Middle East. In 1983, bombings at a U.S. embassy and Marines barracks in Beirut killed hundreds. That these deeds make so evident the bestial nature of those who would assume power if they could have their way and drive us out of that area. The U.S. blames Hezbollah for the attacks. When Lebanon's civil war ended in 1990, the country was weak. But Hezbollah was strong and getting stronger. The fighting force had grown into a political power, winning seats in Lebanon's parliament for the first time in 1992. firing a lot of rockets into Israel, trying to draw Israel back into a war with them. Of course, Israel, they occupied all of this, 
and they push the terrorists further and further south. What do terrorists do? They go to where the people are so they can hide among the people. The leader of the terrorists said, the more civilians you kill, the better. We want you to kill civilians because it gets world opinion in our favor. So they're backing them up into this city right here. That's Rafa. They've got them back. They pushed them all the way down to here, to this city. And that's where they were told by our president, don't go any further. U.S. will stop supplying weapons if you invade Rafa. That's what the president told them. However, the day before Biden announced that it would not withhold, it would hold, withhold weapons from Israel, it assured sanctions waiver to allow arms sales to Qatar and Lebanon. This guy right here is a journalist on Al Jazeera, and he goes on the news every day in the Middle East, right? He's holding Israeli hostages in his home while he's going on the news. That's how much these people hate Israel. There's a picture of him. He was holding three hostages in his home. Three of the four hostages that were rescued by special forces were in his home. And I'm almost out of time, but this, this is the picture of the girl that was uh, captured. There she is being taken away on the motorbike. There's the room that they found her in when they rescued her after 200, I want to say it was 245 days. There's a picture of bring her home now. There she is with her father after she got rescued. They decided they weren't going to listen to President Biden, and they went in there and got her anyway. 245 days, she said she did not see sunlight. They kept her inside this like an animal, kept her closed in in the dark. And we're going to finish up with this, but I, I got to show you this. Being a, I got to go to SWAT school. But I kind of, the inside story here, but I, I like watching this because this is just fascinating. They basically set up a hostage rescue is what this is. So you're going to see this guy. This, this guy's running up here onto the house. And they're going to show you a picture of him in a second. He actually has a shield. He has like a rifle shield because your, your vest usually will stop. The, there's some vests that can stop a rifle, but a lot of them will just stop handguns. So he actually has his rifle shield strapped to his back. They were getting so much small arms fire down on them that he actually straps a shield on his back with his helmet. You can see him going like this. It's pretty amazing. They go into this house. They find out the house where the hostages are in, and they go in there. The journalist and his family were in the, ho in the house. They were killed and the hostage was rescued. There you can see the uh, shield on his back. That's a, a rifle shield. This right here, it's hard to see the picture, but that's actually the soldier's fist. And on the video, I'm telling you a couple things so you can watch for you. Some the video's like 30 seconds. They only show you just a little snippet of it. He comes into the house. They see the two hostages. The hostages are like in fear, like, who are these guys? The guy looks at him and he says, we're IDF, Israeli Defense Forces. We're here to get you out. Gives him a fist bump. Come with us. They get up. They strap some body armor on him. They go out the door. And when they come out the door, he tells them, run. And you can see the guy running. And you can literally just hear small arms fire coming from everywhere down on them. They're getting shot at from every building trying to get out of there. So I told you all that so you can kind of see. Now when you watch the video, you can kind of appreciate what they're, what they're going through here. It's, like I said, they only released just a little tiny piece of it. But it's fascinating. You see him running. 
So then, the crowds, of course, it, now when this first all happens, the people are like, what's going on? What meaneth this? Right? They don't know what's going on. But then the crowds start to come around them and close in on them. Well, up above them, they have F-16s flying around. Okay? Watch this. That's what was going on to keep the people away from them while they're trying to escape. That's about as real as it gets right there, folks. And you see them still moving towards them. They literally had to fight their way out with those hostages to get them to a safe area for the helicopters to pick them up. Under fire the entire time. Then the UN comes out. Remember why I go back to my beginning, despisers of those that are good. The UN comes out and they do an inquiry and they say Israel is guilty of war crimes for dropping bombs on these civilians that were coming over there. Civilians that were coming over there to shoot at their troops while they're rescuing their hostages. Israel, is, not that Palestine couldn't have just released the hostages and the whole thing would have been over, right? None of it would have been necessary. But Israel indiscriminately was dropping bombs on people, is what they're trying to say. Well, praise God, we're out of time. Hey. Hey, Amen. Let's turn that on. Let's take a minute and talk to the Lord here. We're living in the last days, folks. We need to have our hearts right. I am determined I'm going to be ready when Jesus comes, aren't you? These are the last days, folks. This is your chance to get it right.